You know all those tutorials that tell you to shade with color and not with gray? Well, I'm breaking the rules and I'm saying you can shade with gray if you want to. Hey guys, it's Sam and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys three different ways to shade slash color your artworks. But before I get into it, I gotta explain what hue, saturation, and value are. Because we're going to be using all three. To put it simply, hue is just the color, you know, if it's red, if it's orange, green, whatever. And saturation is just how much gray is in a color. And value is essentially the whites and blacks of a color, the brightness essentially. If you want to know a little bit more about color and value, I have a fundamentals tutorial series. I'll link that in the description down below. You can go watch it after this video or watch it now and then come back to this video, you know, whatever works for you. And as a side note, this works for any medium, acrylic, oil, watercolor, marker, digital, it doesn't matter. This, this all applies. <laughs> all right, so let's get talking about these things. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go over them one at a time just so you guys cannot be overwhelmed and distracted. So let's go ahead and talk about this first one, which is shading with just value. So as I said, value is the black and white end of things. So for this sphere, for example, we're starting off with this kind of desaturated orangey color. And as I go, it's essentially going up and down, as I mentioned earlier. It's not a, it's not a beautiful straight line because of human error on my part for picking the colors. But um, you can see it's essentially going up and down for the shading. And that's essentially what I did over here. I just drew a character just so you guys could see it on like a figure versus just spheres because I know spheres don't exactly depict everything in an understandable way. So uh, same thing with here for this, this was his base uh, skin tone. And as I went darker, I went down. It's, as I said, it's not a beautiful straight line, but <laughs> um, yeah. So I did that for everything. I did it for his eyes, his hair, his shirt, everything is uh, up and down shading. Now for this next one, I shaded with value and saturation. So now I'm adding saturation to the playing field. So again, saturation is just how much gray is in a color. You're essentially going horizontal on this little chart thing. And just a reminder, again, this can all be done traditionally. It's just a lot easier to explain digitally because I get this nice fancy little color box thing. <laughs> so here we're not only going up and down, we're going side to side. So we're essentially going diagonally and you can go diagonally whichever way you want. You can be super saturated over here and your shadows can get more saturated or you can be very desaturated and your shadows can get more saturated. So for this uh, example, I went uh, from desaturated light to saturated dark. So over here, you have like a similar orangey-ish yellow color. And as I go, it goes diagonally down to be more saturated. So the color is not changing. This over here, this is not changing. It's just the same color, but uh, different values and saturation. So it's not, again, not beautiful diagonal line, but it's kind of hard to pick and have it stay a diagonal. Anyway, <laughs> so the same thing happened here with his skin tone. Um, I went diagonal and all the way down to be uh, more saturated and darker in value. So I did that for the eyes, the hair, everything, same thing. Now for this third one, this one adds another one. This adds hue. Now remember hue is the color of the color. <laughs> hue is the color essentially. So not only am I going um, side to side with saturation, up and down with value, but I'm also changing the color over here. So lots of things are now changing. So this one gets a little bit more complicated. So on our sphere, I'm starting out with a uh, somewhat desaturated yellow color. And as I go, it slowly changes. If you pay attention to this little arrow over here, you'll see it um, start on the yellow and gradually move through the orange and over to the red. Now I don't always go diagonally. 
you can see this just kind of goes down first with the value and then it will go diagonal. It's, it's a mix of everything. It kind of depends on what you're going for, what you like, what have you, just an example. All right, so the same thing is here with my uh, OC character. Um, started off with this color and you can see uh, both this little arrow moves and it changes in value and saturation. So again, same with the eyes, same with the hair, and same with the shirt. The shirt is less obvious because it's just a white shirt. <laughs> so it goes from like basically like a gray to a, a little bit of a blue tint. Um, but anyway, so that's uh, value, saturation, and hue shading in a nutshell. All right, so I talked really fast about that, but let's go ahead and just cover a little bit in more detail. So when you're picking colors for your artworks, you know, you pick whatever color you want. So let's uh, have this really weird yellowy green color since I was just on that one. So from here, if you wanted to do value shading, you would stay at the same color. You would stay, so you wouldn't change anything over here. You would stay at the same, um, this might be confusing, let me put it over here. And you change, uh, and you don't change the saturation. So I wouldn't go more gray or like more, less gray, English good. Um, you would only be changing up here to get the lighter and down here to get the darker. That's a little bit too dark. Let's just go like right here. There we go. So that's how you would pick value shading. So for value and saturation, let's pick our beautiful color right here. <laughs> um, then you would want to change uh, the saturation as well this time. So maybe I'm going to go a bit less saturated over here to pick the lighter color. So this will be my color. And you can already see a difference. Like this one is way more yellow and this one is way more pale. And then to pick another third color, I can go a bit down here. It's not as dark as the other one. There we go, that's closer. Okay, and you can see the difference here. This one is way more, like there's more color to it this one is more gray, so this one is more saturated. And for hue, go ahead and lay down this super superb color here, uh, hue, value, and saturation. If I'm going uh, lighter, maybe I want it to be more yellow and desaturated and brighter with the value. So go over here. And then for the darker color, maybe I want it to be more green. So I'll go green and I will go uh, with a darker value and more saturation. Now, typically what you will find in, with advice given by uh, more experienced artists, people who've done this stuff for a while, they'll almost always guaranteed say that these two are kind of a no-no that you don't want to shade with just value. You don't want to shade with hue and saturation. You want to include hue. And the reason they say that, like it's not just for nothing, um, is that typically with humans, we find hue, value, and saturation color changes to be more appealing to our eyes. It's more attractive. It's more vibrant. It's more interesting. That's Definitely not to say that these two are wrong, which is something that I want to get across in this video. I just want to say that these three are all options, which is kind of ironic because I actually wrote this video with that in mind of this is the one you want to aim for and not these two. And my opinions and my viewpoints actually changed and I was reminded that art is art and there are no rules. What kind of helped remind me of that was I actually sent out the set of three pictures to quite a few people and I said, which one do you find most appealing? Now to all my art friends, y'all picked on, <laughs> y'all picked up what I was doing and you knew that I was aiming for this kind of tutorial. So y'all were like this one, if you're teaching it, 
but they all kind of leaned more towards these two just in general. There were also a few people who mentioned that this character is a vampire, so this one seemed to be kind of the winner in that aspect. So the point that I'm trying to get here is that there is no real right or wrong answer. It all depends on several variables. It depends on your environment. Maybe he is out at night and, you know, there's not a lot of color in the shadows. Maybe it's just a dark, moody scene. Or maybe I go with my personal tastes and what I find attractive, in which case I'll probably end up going more towards this end. So it can vary with different environments and lighting. It can uh, be depending on what, what sort of feelings you want to invoke a certain mood. And it can also just vary with your own particular style and personal tastes. Someone might find this really attractive and good for them. You, maybe you want to just keep coloring that way. That's fine. I do highly recommend that no matter how you color right now, that you should try to do different ways of coloring because you never know, maybe you'll learn something, maybe you'll find a way that you, a method you might like better. Maybe you'll find out that, ooh, I really don't like that, so you'll know not to do something like that in the future. So I highly recommend that you guys experiment. And just a quick addition, specifically for the hue value saturation section, a lot, it's pretty common to uh, have people suggest having more warm highlights, going warmer with your highlights and cooler with your shadows. I see that as a pretty common uh, tie with the advice on that one. And my advice on that is you can sure try that, but also consider trying cooler highlights and warmer shadows, or maybe uh, just kind of keep in the same cooler area or keep in the same warmer area. Definitely try a different variety of things. And also I did a quick little swatch with my Copic markers. And just to show you guys, um, it's in the same order. So the hue, value, saturation, value, saturation, um, and then the value. Going from dark to light, but in this case, I'm changing the hue. So I'm going from, uh, I actually used a purple uh, violets and I went to a blue green. And then over here, I tried to go uh, less saturated to more saturated. And then over here was just um, the value change, as close as I could. <laughs> so it's certainly possible, again, like I said, with different media. This is just a quick Copic marker example. And also just to show you guys what these pieces look like in black and white, pretty much the same throughout. There might be a little bit of things off here and there, human error on my part. Just to show you guys, you can have um, a similar contrast throughout each of these methods. So just because there's not hue over here doesn't mean that you can't have similar or the same contrast with these two pieces. And same with this one, just because you don't have a change in saturation doesn't mean you can't have the same because it is value. It's all based in value. So that can all be the same. And I just wanted to emphasize that by putting them in black and white. And if you guys would like to see more content tutorials, definitely check out my Patreon page linked in the description down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful. Hopefully it was understandable. <laughs> and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be the first one or one of the first notified of when a new video goes up. Hope you guys enjoyed and thanks so much for watching. Bye.